My name is Stephanie Harper, and this is Eden. Here, my father was king. On the day he died, 17 years ago, I was 23, lonely and afraid. If I'd known then of the nightmare that lay ahead, I think I'd have chosen to die with him. You can't stop now. I mean, you're young, fit. In any case, I've paid you in advance till midnight. You are merciless. Certainly. Right, now let's go again. Let's lay a Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, right. Yes. Jason, I'm cold, I'm tired, and I want to go home. All right, all right. Now, just calm down. Now, this, this is a perfect spot. This is classic, right? We're under a lamp. Now, just... Now, just close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Relax. Relax. Now, I want you to think... I want you to think that you're with your lover. Come on. Now, that, that man that really gets your blood boiling, that's really hot, he makes you hot, all right? Huh? He grabs you in the car. <laughs> now, I do believe you're blushing. Yes, that's lovely. Now, is that passion or embarrassment? I'm sorry. I <laughs> got you. <laughs> Sensational. Just like that, eh? I'm off the board and no more income. I'm not even sure you can do this, you know. Stephanie did leave very strict instructions. I am still her husband. It was decided at last week's director's meeting. The vote was unanimous. I assure you, it's all perfectly legal. But get advice, by all means. How come I wasn't informed the meeting was on? You haven't attended one meeting in the last 12 months, Greg. Anyway, your presence there wouldn't have changed things. Damn it, there are bills to be paid. Staff salaries and household expenses will continue to be met by the company. Except, of course, your personal expenses. Those from here on in will be your responsibility. Or you can go on living at the house. For the time being. You never approved of me marrying her, did you? Well, did you, you bastard! I think this meeting's concluded. Thank you. 
go to hell. I'm not putting up with this anymore! You're drunk. Again. Yes. Yes, I am. You can blame me. I am not your whore, do you hear me? You can have the money, okay? Anything you want. Please don't leave me alone tonight. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? Baby, I'm sorry. Please, baby, will you stay the night with me? Please. Ladies and gentlemen, part of the press, Tara, the exciting new face in the fashion world. Yeah! Hey! Well, I find you very exciting. We don't wish to know about that. Oh. Well, here's to the flavour of the month. Yeah! <laughs> and here's to us. Oh, to us. Nice, nice. Why not? We deserve it. Yes. All right, then. Well, here's to Jason Peebles, star maker extraordinaire. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Here's to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Six months to the day. Not bad. Not bad. All right. It's fan bloody tasty. That's better. Okay, now let's get back to work, please, because we're going to start shooting in about five minutes. All right, five. Caught that light. Such a good How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? Now, listen, on behalf of the local trendies, I'd like to say welcome. Oh, good grief. No, wait a minute. Local trendies don't say good grief. Oh, really? No, no, they just say... Ah, oh. ah. Uh, uh, Sorry. Do you want this over your head? No, 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 she would, you know. I owe it all to you two. <laughs> I had to learn to walk all over again. I knew the day you came into my office you had a different kind of quality. A sort of mysterious something. Whatever. That bloody original, darling. Yeah, that's it, you know. The Sphinx. Ages. It's maturity and wisdom contradicted by a youthful facade. But that's a very potent mixture. But look, there's not one man here today who hasn't been looking at you. Not you, Mother. You really are a dreary little so-and-so, Jay. Do you mind? Somebody's going to overhear you one of these days and think I really am your mother. No, it's impossible. Jo, yes, the clients are really getting restless. Oh, I'll be over in a second, I promise. OK, now, what's going on? Are we all getting the lights on? I read your comments on the TV contract. You know, you really are incredible. I mean, you picked up on things that I'd questioned. Where on earth do you learn about contracts? Just gut instinct, I guess. Well, if you ever decide to pack modelling in, there's always a job for you backstage. You could do with a good head around the place. Oh. Sorry, Mother. Why have I put up with you these last three years? Um, because I'm cute and, um, you fancy me gutless. <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> no point trying to discuss anything serious in front of this fool. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Mm. Behave. And don't touch my champagne. Mm. Oh, um, second thoughts. Do you know, I know your face nearly as well as I know my own. Well, I could light you with a soft light and diffuse it, and you'd look 21. But if I use hard sunlight, it'd be, um, 35, 29? Yeah. But there's moments. Still, that's the Sphinx, isn't it? It's eternal beauty. 
Now, that old girl kept a secret for centuries, you know, and good on her. Jason, you are a romantic and a cavalier. Well, that's my secret. Well, here's to us, then, and well-kept secrets. Dog, I did. It was a joke, Max. You're supposed to laugh. Yeah. Did you have a nice day? So, what do you think of your new house? It was a bit expensive, but I reckon we earned it. What do you think? You never know, we might even find you a little lady friend. You mustn't run off and leave me, though. I'll get lonely if you go away and leave me. Do you want something to eat? <coughs> yes. I'll get you something in a minute. <sighs> I am so tired. I'm too old for all this, Maxie. That's my trouble. Career. She had quite a lot of promise when he was younger. Something went wrong. Don't think he could drag himself out of bed if you get my drift. Anyway, he blew it. Rex and Alley Cat with a touch of class. Then he married Miss Moneybag, Stephanie Harper. You must have read about her. Private little fantasies about Greg Marsden. Not you two. Out. Are we here because of Greg Marsden? 40, 30, 30. No, of course not. I've never even met him. I love the game, that's all. Ah, oh, that's right. Of course you play. We should get Jason to do some shots of you on a tennis court.
It's not exactly a vintage, is it? He might as well have arrived naked. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Marsden has a reputation for being attracted by new faces, particularly beautiful ones in the public eye. I hear he thrives on challenge. But don't look now. Like a bee to the honey pot. Hi there. I'm Greg Marsden. I don't believe we've met. Morning, Joe. Good grief. Not exactly what I said when I walked in. Are they for a layout? They're for you. All of them. Guess who? I don't need to. What happened to you two last night? I saw you leave with him. You walked me to my car and car? I drove home alone. What car? My car. I bought it yesterday. Red Beetle Convertible. Very chic. Quite a bargain, too. How terrific! It's not a problem taking your clothes off, you know. I mean, it's not abnormal. Everyone here takes their clothes off. They do if I ask them. That's quite natural. OK, take your clothes off. See? Oh, God, look, we've got to get this shot done somehow. Bosey, line that camera up, will you, please? Joe, you've got another call. Oh, no more calls, Lisa. Take messages. God, it's been chaos in here this morning. Phones never stopped since I got in. We were a big hit last night. I think everyone in town's rung. Congratulations, Joe. That's fantastic. Oh, hey, fever. This stuff's gonna have to go. I can't stay. I'm not in the mood this morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, if I knew that you were interested in tennis, I would have bought a tennis racket. Oh, don't let us stop you. Oh, listen, mother. Oh, that model that you got me for today, she won't take her clothes off. Well, just ask her nicely. I did ask her nicely. Well, I'll just have to ask her nicely again. He's absolutely mad. You're not wrong. Oh, Joe, that's great. Yes, it is, isn't it? Thought I might include that in the next collection. He's quite a workaholic, aren't you? <laughs> what about you and Greg Marsden? Okay, what do you mean? Well, do you fancy him? You must have a sex life. You do have a sex life, don't you? I mean, all these months, I just presume. I don't have time. You know what it's like. You never stop amazing me. I mean, most girls today are dizzy from playing musical beds, and my top model has this quaint, old-fashioned attitude that's well, it's positively middle-aged. Uh, present company accepted, of course. <laughs> Difficult, is it? Do you think you could manage that? I'll even lend you my sparrow. Hello? Hi, Tara. It's Susie. Oh, hi, Susie. Guess what? Jason's changed your call. Yeah? It looks like five o'clock now. Five instead of six? Yep. Same location? Sure is. OK. Thanks. Oh, Susie, yeah. could you add another name to the invitation list for me? Sure. <laughs>
You are a very beautiful woman. Thank you. All the men must tell you that. A few. Oh, yeah? How many? Well, let me see now. There was some... Um... Mm. Oh, and then there was... Mm. Oh, and don't let's forget... Oh, him too. Mm. Oh, and... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm jealous of every one of them. We hardly know one another. I feel I've known you a long time. Well, what do you call it? Uh, deja vu. Mr. Marston, your table is ready. Thank you. Is there a boyfriend or husband in the picture? There was someone once. Someone I love very much. A fairy tale prince that I dreamed about ever since I was a little girl. Or what happened? A dream turned into a nightmare. I woke up. How about you? Me? Oh, no, you don't. It's not fair. Oh, come on, of course it's fair. I told you. Well, nothing serious. But I could be tempted by you. Tara, I want us to be friends. Just friends? Whatever. Greg? Phil! Wow, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. You coming, Phil? Yeah, I'll be right with you. I wasn't sure if it was you or not. It's so dim in here. Ah, uh, Tara Wells, this is Philip Stewart, an old friend of my wife's. How do you do? How do you do? So, Phil, how's Jilly? No, she's well. The last time I saw her. I'm away a lot these days. Well, that's too bad. Yes. Well, enjoy your meal. Nice to have met you, Miss Wells. And you, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Greg? Phil? The Stewarts are my wife's best friends. Tell me about your wife, Greg. What was she like? She was a nice person. Anyone that worried as much as Stephanie did about what people thought was just crazy. It's bizarre. The thing that first struck me about you, you remind me physically of Stephanie. Oh, but she was an ugly duckling. You are the swan she always wanted to be. To us. And whatever the future may bring. To us. Concentrate. I need a powder down. Powder down. Bib and Bob, double quick, powder down. Come on. And Bob, look, I want this fellow to have a bit of blood dribbling off his neck like a vampire's really bit, you know, terrific. Okay, Bose. Put a doubler on there, mate. Uh, David, I want you to change those gels, take the pinks out and get into a Nile blue or something like that. And put a yes mac on the key, mate. Hey, JP, Joe's in a mood. You better get in there right now. Oh, really? Hello, what can we do for you? I'd like to speak to Tara Wells. Tara, there's someone here to see you. Now, don't take too long. Yes, Mother, now, what can I do for you? 
Do you want to see me? I'm Jilly Stewart. Can we talk? Are uh, you a reporter? No. I'm a friend of Greg Marston's. Close friend. Oh, I see. I you met my husband the other night. Oh, yes, that's right. Greg introduced us at the restaurant. Are you having an affair with Greg? I'm sorry? I know he's been seeing you. We met at a tennis match. We've been out to dinner once, that's all. You're lying. No, I'm not. Look, would you like to talk some more? There's a bar around the corner. It's a little more private. I've got a couple more shots to do and I can meet you there. It's all right. I'll see you soon. Longer than I expected. I wasn't sure if you'd still be here. No, don't worry about it. What do you have? Oh, I think a beer would be nice. Yeah, a beer and another scotch. Thanks. Well, I only drink when I'm down. You know, Philip's away, gets lonely in an empty house. Yes, I know. Still, you do have Greg. Do I? Yes, yes, I do. He needs me. Oh, well, Greg's addictive, like this stuff. He uh, told me a bit about his wife. I gather you and she were best friends. Mm. Since we were kids, our fathers knew one another. They did business. So I suppose it was her death that brought you and Greg together. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Oh. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> Stephanie was a beer drinker. So, you were saying? What? Oh. Yeah, no, um... I was about to say, Greg never really loved Stephanie. He told me. So, it wasn't like I was doing anything disloyal when I fell in love with him. It's just one of those things. Did Stephanie love Greg? I suppose so, yeah. What time is it? Uh, getting on for seven. Seven? Oh, God, I've got to go. Yeah, Greg's waiting for me at the house. Did you drive here? No, I took a taxi. I always seem to take taxis these days. Well, I'll drive you home then. Yeah? But I I've got to go now. He gets angry if I'm late. time to catch me is in the mornings. Bye. Bye. How much longer? Five minutes, all right? Or do you want to see the dark circles under her eyes? Five minutes? No, that's not all right. Look, we're all ready to go out there now. A bit of chop chop, okay? Thank you. Okay, look, okay. I hope your camera self destructs. Hmm, there's not much we can do about late nights. I'm sorry, Nicole. Yes! It's not five minutes yet. It looks 
Hello, Tara. I see you've added to your collection. Yes, quite a few. It's a beauty. I, uh, I brought you a little something. Oh, Dan, it's beautiful. Thank you. Echoes of Orpheus. Need a hand? Sorry to be so feeble. I thought the first meal you and I were going to have together was bacon and eggs. <laughs> well, you certainly learned to cook. I haven't tasted it yet, thank oh, you. But it smells good. You know, you're getting to be quite famous. I think I must be the only doctor in North Queensland who buys copies of Vogue. You reading Vogue? That I can't imagine. <laughs> no, Tara. I've never seen you look lovelier. I warned you, you should have charged me more. No, I don't just mean in a physical sense. There's a, a new kind of ease. You're more confident. And it's all your own doing. <laughs> you had more than a bit to do with it. Are you happy? Yes, I think so. I don't just mean your success. No, I know. How many men do you have in your life? None. Well, I've thought about you. A great deal. You haven't told me what you're doing in Sydney yet. Well, it's... it's just a medical conference. But I'm really here to see you. Well, I couldn't let you just disappear. Something happened between us up there, didn't it? Well, I think we're ready. Where's the bathroom? It's through the bedroom, turn right. Will you serve? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Well, you've certainly had a great view. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? I've always loved Sydney Harbour. Yeah, me too. Do you know, I've never been inside the Opera House. Oh, well, you should try to while you're here, Dan. Sutherland's doing a season at the moment. You love your music, don't you? I think there have been times that actually saved my sanity. This looks terrific. Thank you. Thanks. Well, if I can get some tickets for the opera, will you join me? I'd love to. Good. Well, 
appétit. You've just pulled it off, haven't you? Ah, yes, the bank robbery of the century. And now you're just getting into the fruits of your plunder. Now, that's the feeling we want in it. So let's let's keep it in there now. Keep it going. Um, Von Ribbentrop, whatever your name is, don't forget to look after your mincers there. That's right, and you too, Johnny. Tara, come forward a bit. That's it. I can't see you. That's it. Ooh, crazy, crazy. Double quick, mate. Bit of poly. Bit of Dittmar on the mincers. Jason, you must be ready for a reload. I haven't shot anything yet. Give me five minutes. We just got this going. Anyone for tennis? Hi. No wonder I'm highly struck, you know. Why haven't you been answering my calls? I've left messages all over town for you. Yes, I know. I'm sorry, Greg. I've been flat out. That's no excuse. I really haven't had a moment. About half a minute before we lose the sun behind cloud, Tara. Who's he? A friend? How close a friend? Not that close. We have a professional relationship. I also happen to like the man. Do you want a coffee? Oh, I haven't got time. How about the weekend? Haven't planned anything. Come and spend it at the house. With me. Your wife's house? Terrific. I'll pick you up on Saturday at 10 o'clock. Don't change your mind. Murder, Jason. It's his fault I'm late. I'm so sorry. Look, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Am I too late? Oh, we can go in an interval. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Oh, heck, I really love this opera. I didn't want to miss the first act. <sighs> what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Let's go see it some other time. Do you mind? I don't mind what we do, so long as I can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this place always used to be so crowded. Time's too yeah. That was the old man's spot over there. Yeah, he'd be here every day after work, propping up the bar. Except for Sundays. That mum would come in at six and she'd drag him off to have his dinner. Hey! I know you. Hello, Dot. Danny Marshall. Boy, must be 30 years. Frank Marshall's boy. Yeah. You wanted to be a doctor. 
I remember. But always bandaging my poor bloody cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, Doc. Except now it's people. You mean you actually ended up being a real doctor? Uh-huh. Fancy man. Dot, this is Tara. Oh, pleased to meet you. And you. Danny Marsh. Oh. It was this high when I knew him. <sighs> Cheeky little devil. He used to steal all the milk money in the street. <laughs> Until I got caught in the act. It scared the living daylights out of me. I never did it again. Look, Dot, I'm dying of thirst. I'll be with you in a minute. These are on the house. Oh, thanks, Thank Dot. Well, you sure what happened, did you? Get your shoes. <laughs> oh, I know just how you feel, Doc. Cheers, Doc. You know, we used to have a backyard that I could spit across in a strong wind. Every weekend through summer, a mob of us kids would go down to the harbour and we'd dive for the pennies that were chucked in by the tourists. <laughs> I guess the sharks must have felt sorry for us. <laughs> Either that or they weren't hungry. The old man used to brag about me to his mates down here. Danny, he'd say, is the bravest kid in the neighborhood. Fact is, I kept him in cigarettes. I wish I'd known you then. Been able to dive for pennies with you. Just those fond memories. Don't turn the lights on. It's not the glamorous, successful model that attracts me. It's the warm, intelligent lady I met in Queensland. Who loves good music. Kids and animals. The seashells. And I'll bet when she was little, she was the bravest kid in the neighborhood too.
trust me enough to tell me what the hell is going on. We can't see one another again. I'm sorry, it was unfair of me. Tara. No, Dan. Forgive me. Goodbye. Tara. It's too slow. Come on, concentrate. Well, get with it. I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. I wonder, would you mind tilting your head back a little, please? You couldn't manage a little more? Look, I don't know what's the matter with you today. I mean... I don't know where your mind is. Well, it certainly isn't here at work, is it? I mean, you've got about as much spontaneity as a, a two-year-old corpse. All right, kill that snow. Kill the bloody snow. Look, Rosie, kill the snow. Rosie, switch that bloody thing down. Oh. Now switch it off. Now look, I'm a professional, and this is my profession, and I have not got time to waste on amateurs. We'll all go home. We're finished. Go home. <clears throat> well, have a good long weekend. And make sure that you're here early Tuesday morning. I love you. Bring home. It's all right, Julie. Oh, God, I'm so grateful to you. Thanks. No one left to call anymore when it happens. I used to have a lot of friends. Why didn't you phone Greg? Oh, no, I couldn't. It's not the first time, you see. He gets violent when he's angry. Been worse lately. We haven't made love for weeks. I don't know what to do. You know, I've been, I've been giving him money since Stephanie died. The past few weeks, I've had to pay all his bills. And I mean, you can't treat me like this. I could tell a lot about Mr. Greg Marsden if I wanted. I could ruin him. There it is. What do you think? What I can see, I like. This is my wife's testimonial to being her own person after her father died. She got a bit pale, I think, living in the old man's shadow. I like the house, but I can't wait to get rid of all her stuff inside. I... I didn't tell you you'll be meeting Stephanie's children. I arranged with their schools for them to come home for the weekend. I hope you don't mind. I thought it might help convince you that I'm really a family man at heart. It's 
sit her. You're the first woman I brought here since Stephanie died. So be prepared for a call reception from the kids. But I reckon by lunchtime you'll have them eating out of your hands. Matty, grab the luggage, will you? Yes, sir. Be it ever so humble. <laughs> oh, we're being watched. Uh, matey, this is Miss Wells. My pleasure, Miss. How do you do? <laughs> Hello, Kai's. Hello. Aren't you beautiful? He normally doesn't like strangers. Well, I'm glad he likes me. I've always had a way with animals. <laughs> out. You get out. Show you to your room, and I'll disappear while I check on lunch. I've had to let all the staff go, well, except Matey, of course. And I've got a temporary stumbling around in the kitchen. So hard to get good help these days. Huh? It's got a great view. It sure has. That's my room, just there. So don't hesitate if you need anything. I'll see you downstairs. Hey, I'm really glad you're here. Must be Dennis. I know who you are. I know everything about you. You're Tara Wells. <laughs> That's right. My sister used to cut pictures of you out of magazines. Why did she do that? She thinks you're really beautiful. I don't know if she still does. <laughs> Would you like me to show you around? I'd be delighted. <laughs> do you mind my being here? No. I don't mind. But Sass, that's Sarah, my sister. Well, half-sister. She doesn't dig it too much. I gather that you and Sassy don't like Greg very much. Not very much. He was another one of Mum's mistakes. Mum liked simple things, really. It's just that she let people push her around. Make her believe she had to be what they wanted. Instead of just being herself. Sarah's like old Max. Sort of stubborn. Tell me about your father. He was husband number two. He's a research scientist. Lives in the States. Do you hear from him? Sure. He sent us a sympathy card after the accident. Was that your mother's room? How did you know? Oh, just something about the way you looked when you passed by it before. Mm. We better not go in there. Sass is in there. She's in a kind of a stinking mood. She'll come out when she gets hungry. She spends a lot of time in there, though. Would you like to see my room? I thought you'd never ask. When people are given the tour, they generally give my room a miss. Because it's such a mess. Heavens, did you build all these yourself? Yep, they come in kits, then you put them together. This one was really difficult. Yes, I can see it, must have been. I want to be a test pilot when I finish school. Wouldn't that be a bit dangerous? Nah, it's okay. I can handle it. Well, there's plenty of time yet to think about your future, isn't there? That's what my mother always thought. But I'm not going to waste a single second. That's my mother. Do you miss her? I don't believe my mother's dead. I know what everyone says, but someday she's going to walk in here, 
some people in for a real shock. Do yeah, sure does. Okay, so what do we do after lunch? It's up to you. Well, I'm open to suggestion. Well, there's swimming, sailing, tennis, fishing. No, not fishing. Don't you like fishing? I don't like to kill things. Man kills to survive, Dennis. It's nature's law. He also kills for other reasons, Greg. It's a part of human nature. It's always been that way. It's not going to change. And look at what you're eating. Do you think that steer died of old age? Hey, come on. Let's talk about something happy. I told you she'd come out when she got hungry. Hello. Sarah, this is Miss Wells. She's a famous model. You've seen her on television commercials. I know who she is. My brother and I have been paroled for the weekend to be chaperones. Matey, I think Sarah is ready for her lunch. Yes, sir. You're very pretty. No, I'm not. I look like my mother. Miss Wells is a guest in this house. And you know I don't like talking about your mother. Now, if you're going to go on behaving like a spoiled brat, you can cut out of here. Don't you order me about. This isn't your house. <laughs> she pretends to be tough. But she still cries herself to sleep every night. I've heard her. We'll take the boat out. Sorry? The boat. We'll take the boat out on the harbour. Sounds like fun. Yeah, sure. I thought just the two of us. I thought you were a family man. More coffee? Mm. Thanks. What's on your mind, Julian? Well, it's pretty rare for us to sit down and eat together these days. More's the pity. I sense a hidden purpose. I want a divorce. Fine. What took you so long to get round to it? Oh, I'm, I've been expecting it. You won't fight me. Oh, darling, I'm a little tired of it all. I've gone along with the situation until now, hoping you'd wake up to Greg, the sort of person he is. But frankly, I find it faintly immoral to continue to support my wife's lover. I've been meaning to discuss it with you. You got over the others. I was hoping you'd get over Greg as well. You've been quietly indulging me all this time, have you? I suppose I have, in a way. How long have you known? Oh, I could probably pinpoint the day it started. The day we played tennis at Stephanie's with the Rutherfords, just before she and Greg left for Eden. Well, you're wrong. Happened long before. Did Stephanie know? No, of course not. Julie, I don't know what happened at Eden, but be careful. I think Marsden is capable of almost anything. I intend to marry Mr. Greg Marsden.
Can I stay? Oh, yeah, when we're clear of the traffic. Tara, why do you like Greg? I like lots of people. I like you. If you're waiting for me, don't. Can you swim? Sure. My mother was afraid of the water. Come on, Dennis. Outside the gates, the day I twisted my ankle. When was that? Months ago. <sighs> it must have been somebody else. I don't even know what school you go to. Hey! Kids. It was a mistake having him home for the weekend. No, it wasn't. I was really pleased to have met them. The past year or so must have been terrible. Ah, they're young. They'll get over it. I hope so. You really like her, don't you, Sass? You pretend you don't, but you do. I don't know what you mean. Just because she's a friend of his, doesn't mean she's the same as he is. Does she remind you of anyone? No. She's no different from any of his other female hangers-on. I've seen the look in her eyes when she's with him. She wants him to make love to her. I don't believe that. You've got sex on the brain because you're going through puberty. I have not. Anyway, he's got no right bringing her into our house. I hate him. And I hate her. You didn't have to turn it off. It's one of my favorites. What do you want? To see how you are. I was sorry you didn't come out on the harbour with us. No one should have gone. It was my mother's boat. Our lawyers say he can't touch anything. I think he was only doing it to please me. Impress you, you mean? Bringing you here, into my mother's house, to make love. Sarah. 
He is your lover, isn't he? No, he's not. I'm sorry. Listen to me. Greg is not my lover. And nothing will happen in this house that your mother wouldn't approve of, I promise you. How could someone like you be with Greg Marsden? Things aren't always what they seem. Oh, sassy. I'd like to be your friend if you'll let me. You're so beautiful. I wish I was. Hey. When I was your age, I was scared, very self-conscious, had braces on my teeth. I was plump. I didn't think I was a bit beautiful. And I was sure that nobody could really like me. Unless, of course, they had an ulterior motive. So I, I pretended I didn't care and accepted their attention for whatever reason it was given. It took me a long time to let go of those fears and insecurities. But you know you're beautiful now. I had my moments. My mother was like that. Because she wasn't beautiful, she thought people only liked her because she was Stephanie Harper with all the money. But you know, sometimes, if you're really lucky, someone comes along who shows you that real beauty is something that's in here. It's always been there. And all you have to do is just trust it. Doesn't mean you can't make the best of what you've got on the outside. For instance, if you pulled your hair back off your pretty face, it would make a big difference. Anyway. Friends. Maybe. Hi. Grab a seat. Sure I'm not intruding? You're not. That's my mother. When she was younger. With Grandpa Max. Really? Surprise. You should have called and let us know you were coming. Uh, Tara Wells, this is Jilly Stewart, an old friend of the family's. Hi. You'll have to excuse us, Tara, but Jilly and I have some very important business that we have to discuss. Dennis will look after you, won't you, mate? Sure. Excuse us. That was only Jilly. She drinks. you're doing what am i doing you bastard what is she doing here you're drunk well what if i am you're having an affair with her aren't you 
I'm warning you, Jilly. Aren't you? No! I hardly know the lady. I've taken her out a couple of times, that's all. I'm working at times seen out with a few other women. I'm just trying to take the suspicion off us. The way you've been behaving, I had to do something, didn't I? Is that the truth? Yep. Do you really think I'd be carrying on with a strange woman under my wife's roof? With my wife's children here. And aren't you forgetting something? You still do have a husband. Oh, that's what I came to tell you. Philip has agreed to a divorce. Oh, we can get married. Oh, well, smile, baby. all this? I think I'd better go, don't you? But you don't have to. If I stayed now, it wouldn't be the same. Well, I'll drive you home. No, no, it's okay. Dennis has called me a taxi. Oh, has he? I asked him to. Jilly was a close friend of my wife's. She's also Sarah's godmother. I see. Well. Well, I'll take that. Thank you. Bye-bye, Dennis. Say goodbye to Sassy for me, will you? Are you sure I can't drive you home? Tara, I'm really sorry. Don't worry about it. She's been drinking. I worked that out. I'll call you later. Fine. Come on, please. Right.
Hello. Dan. Thought you'd already left. What kind of fellow changed his mind? Have you been waiting long? Yeah, most of the day. Still, you're here now. That's what matters. Although, uh, I was beginning to think you'd gone away for the weekend. Well, would you like to come in for a... No, there's, there's something I want to ask you first. All it requires is a simple yes or no answer. Will you marry me? I can't. Why can't you? Oh, Dan, please. It's a reasonable enough question. I love you. I want to marry you. I warn you I'm stubborn. I won't give in without a fight. I thought on Orpheus that you and I had reached some understanding. Tara, you haven't told me a thing. Now, I know something's wrong. It worries me. You worry me. It's not your concern. I'm not your concern. Aren't you? Dan, you don't know the first thing about me. I know I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Is there someone else? In a way. Oh, that's a hell of an answer. It's the only answer I can give you. Are you in love with him? Dan, will you please just leave me alone, go back to your island, and forget I ever existed? Sure. Sure. If you can look me in the eyes and tell me you don't love me. I don't love you. You're lying. Good luck, Tara. I wondered how you'd feel about going up to Eden. I've heard you talk about it. It sounds like a perfect place for two people to be alone together. Eden? I'd rather not. Well, I realise that it must have some unhappy memories for you. It does. Look, why don't we drive out to the mountains for a week? Both too well known. Greg, I just want to be alone with you. At Eden. Really? Really. Okay. I'm in bed with my cat. I'll come over. No, you won't. I'll be there in five minutes. <sighs> oh, I'm sure you could. I'll call you in the morning. Okay. Sleep tight. 
Knall. Jilly, it's Tara. I have to tell you the truth. Huh? I'm flying out to Eden with Greg. What? We're at the airport. We leave in a few minutes. Eden? I felt you ought to know. Uh, I thought you said nothing was going on. I'm sorry, Jilly. 